You know, every once in a while, Uncle Steve comes out to to try to offer some sage advice to young tech buyers out there. And I don't want to be somebody that pours cold water on your excitement about a fancy new Apple tablet, because if you need it, if you've decided you need an upgrade, if you're coming from an older one, if you have a legitimate use case for it, then you should be excited for it. Go ahead. Go ham. However... However, whoever. Oh, and you are, if you are decided on one, by the way, link in the description. It does help the channel. However, I do feel the need to come out and offer a tale of caution about new Apple iPads and iPads in general. They always seem really interesting. You always have it in your mind, all these cool things that you're going to do with your iPad Pro. However, I caution you, think twice about what you're going to do with it. Make sure you have an uh, absolutely in-stone use case for getting an iPad Pro before you shell out over $1,300 for the large one, or I think it's well over 1000 for the 11-inch one. Have it in your mind exactly what you're going to do with it. Don't have it be like, well, you know, I'll get it, and it's really powerful, so I could could figure out what I'm going to do with it. No, no, no. It never works that way. And this is kind of the struggle that the tech industry has had with tablets for going on like 40 years now. You know, tablets aren't a new concept. You go back and watch old Computer Chronicles. They had these grid pads. They were essentially, hold on. They were essentially the size of it takes i have to move this around the camera essentially the size of like an old think pad heavy as can be with a screen on the top and a huge pen that did handwriting recognition it was supposed to be forms replacement but they were they were impractical they 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 were just huge and whatever else and people figured it was it was easier to carry around whatever form or a laptop or a portable or a luggable at that point than carry around something like that for forms replacement And I feel like, with the exception of media consumption, which is really the main use for tablets, that we're still kind of in the same boat. We haven't really advanced the argument in the last 40 years. So I I fell into the trap. I got, this isn't even the M1 one. This is a iPad Pro fourth generation 12.9 inch display device, 256 gigs of RAM. It is gorgeous. I love it. It's thin. It has the boxy uh, corners. It had that new design language. Let's go ahead and open it up. Got face ID and all the rest of it. Just an absolutely gorgeous OLED display. I think this is the one with ProMotion. Yeah, ProMotion display. Phenomenal. And I'm thinking, well, I'm going to do, I'm going to be able to do so much of this. I'm going to be able to do thumbnails if I'm in, if I'm in bed or if I'm out, I'm going to take this and all the rest of it. And I'll tell you what it spends 99% of the time doing. Sitting in bed watching YouTube. The same thing that a $200 tablet can give you. The same thing that the less expensive iPads can give you. Now, is it OLED? Is it ProMotion? No. There are tablets that offer that in a $500 price range, $400 price range, but you don't have to spend $1,300 to do it. If you are an artist and you're going to make use of the new pen stuff and you're going to do all the fancy stuff on here and you need a large canvas for the 12.9-inch display and you're going to whatever, that's fine then you obviously have a use case. But if you're somebody going in thinking you're going to buy one of these as like a laptop or MacBook replacement, boy, are you in for a surprise. And a lot of that is Apple's fault. You know, I thought the same thing. I was like, well, I'm going to be able to edit video on this. I'm going to be able to do a lot of stuff on the fly with this. I, you know, I got the 256 gigs of RAM, or gigs of RAM, gigs of storage. And I thought, you know, I got the pen. I got all the rest of it. Thought it'd be awesome for whatever. And I have used it. I will take it out with me sometimes with a keyboard case to do work, to do writing work. However, it's really not that great at writing work if you have to go back and do something, unless you hook up a mouse to this, which you can do, I think, through Bluetooth. Unless you hook up a mouse and then you're futzing around and using the pen and trying to find a line that I want to replace a word instead of just erasing, going all the way back. It's not great at that. At that point, it's better off for me to bring out a cheap Chromebook or to bring out my MacBook Air than use this. Same thing, my MacBook Air M2. Same price as this, okay? You can get the MacBook Air, I think it's the M3 one now, or whatever it is. $12.99 is the starting price on that. Think about what you're spending on a, on a 12.9 or now 13-inch iPad Pro. $12.99 is the base model. Get yourself a MacBook Air. You're going to get a lot more use out of it. It's a lot more dur- a lot more flexible and versatile in what you can do. I understand you don't have te- uh, touch screen or pen support, and it's not going to be as great for content consumption. You can't sit in bed and watch videos on it. But if you're getting, if you're spending $1,300 on an iPad, it's for productivity. 
And I'm telling you, unless you're an artist that absolutely needs that pen input, you ain't, you're not going to find it here. Apple hasn't given the app support. They haven't bringing us the, the, the pro apps. It's almost laughable that they're putting an M4 in an iPad unless they seriously beef up the app experience, unless they give us the pro-level productivity apps that you could find on Mac that you use on other Mac platforms, on your desktop and on your laptop. Until you have that, that is useless in this, absolutely useless. How fast can you possibly watch an, a, a YouTube video? You need M4 for that? iPad can uh, calculate uh, to the moon, but it can't do. It can't edit a video. I don't understand that at all. But uh, just like I said, they are really cool pieces of tech. Super thin, super nice, alluring, uh, uh, like premium. All the rest of it, you're like, oh man, this is great. I'm going to get this as a laptop replacement. Why do I need a MacBook? I get the func- I get the flexibility of a touchpad, and I get the pen input, and I can bring it with me, and I can have a keyboard when I when I want one, and I and I don't when I want when I don't need one. I could bring it on a plane. I could think long and hard. Take a deep breath. You know, take something for the FOMO. Whether you know what are you guys do? Take an Advil or something. I don't know what you got to do. Count to ten. And ask yourself, before you spend $1,300 on one of these, what am I going to use it for? A, what am I going to use it for? And B, is what I would plan on using this for better served with a MacBook Air? That's the conversation. So I understand it's the only product with an M4. You're all excited to try it out and all the rest of it. That's fine. But that's a, a lot of money. I'm telling you, iPads kind of blend into each other. I literally had to look up what generation this was. Had to look it up doesn't have an M1. It has the A whatever. And uh, I can tell you that's still fast enough for what I use it for. Still smooth. Still does uh, typing just fine. Still does YouTube just fine. Still does email just fine. It never really went beyond for me what a 200 or 300 a tablet could do. Is it more premium than that? Is the display nicer than that? Absolutely. Would I say it was worth to me $1,300? No. Would Is my MacBook Air... M2 worth $1,300? More than that. I've gotten so much use out of that, taking it for writing, editing videos, editing thumbnails, all the rest of the things I thought maybe I'd do on this, do on the MacBook Air M2, do it better, faster, and just have a better overall experience. So, like I said, take a step back from the excitement. Don't want to to rain on anybody's parade. Don't Don't want to make it where you're not excited about a new tech product, new tech purchase. You should be, right? Apple stuff, when it comes out, really cool. You know, you got super thin. I was like, oh, this thing is thin and premium and nice. And the displays are always gorgeous. And it's just the best tablet, all the rest of it. But I would say this, the same thing about the the Samsung tablet, the big one, and all the rest of it. Ask yourself what you're going to be doing on this that you would not be doing on a regular iPad that you could save five, $600 on. What would you be doing on this that would not be better served on a MacBook Air for the same price? Just ask yourself those questions. And if the answer is still, you know what, I need an iPad because I want to be able to uh, write on it. I want to be able to have that pen functionality. I want to be able to remove the keyboard when I don't need it. I want to be able to watch videos and movies in bed and stuff like that. I'll tell you what, don't get the big one then. The the large one for watching stuff in bed is a problem. It's unwieldy. You're sitting there and things heavy and you're falling asleep. I, uh, that's that's my only, that's my well, my warning. That's my uh, my tale of caution there. So make sure that you you have a direct, you know, the tablets, the tech industry still really hasn't figured out tablets, to be perfectly honest with you. The answer is there for Apple. You know, give it the pro-level productivity apps, and you'll see a lot of use for it. But they know it'll cannibalize and eat into their, their MacBook sales. So there's really not an appetite for Apple to do that because it's going to cut into the sales of another product class. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time. Have that Steve-licious day.